Well, it, it is about this new field of relatively new field of bio nanotechnology, which is exploring the combinations between man made nanomaterials and biomolecules and biostructures, which we have in nature. And this is all with the aim to design new hybrid materials or systems, which are primarily applied in medicine or sensing. So to design really important sensors, but can be also used to design functional materials. For example, in the book, we write about butterfly wings. We write about um, bio-inspired nanotechnology. How did our knowledge that we gathered over the years on natural systems inform the scientists to develop new materials? The idea for a book came after a range of courses that I was teaching and also discussions with my colleagues where we realized that we get lots of people into the field of bio nanotechnology from different areas. And it's very difficult then to kind of learn to speak a common language, um, into the language of interdisciplinarity and that we lack a kind of reference book where some of the terminology of the new field would be explained and covered. And maybe some aspects would be brought onto the same level so that everybody can start from the same point in reading different chapters. Well, um, there are many topics which uh, I still uh, look so for, not, not look for, but uh, I can definitely uh, look in the book, um, for example, for different analytical methods for this uh, bio-nano uh, conjugates and constructs. So this is very useful, but also just um, for pleasure to read about the bio-inspired nanomaterials. There are beautiful pictures uh, which you wouldn't think of, you know, uh, you see it every day in your life, but uh, you never thought why, for example, butterfly wings are colored. It's not just a pigment, it's a structure, basically. So there are many um, inspiring things and interesting and fascinating. So just to read for pleasure, not just to learn, but also, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad, first of all, if I may just add that you mentioned two things. First of all, of course, it is a text textbook, but I think it could be interesting also to different um, readers that come from maybe even remotely just connected fields. And it's funny that you mentioned the chapter on bio-inspired nanotechnology because this is the chapter I suffered through this <laughs> chapter the most. And I have written it. I have like completely written it and Tonya knows that. And I finished it one Saturday morning and I went home and it bothered me for the next week because I just felt there is something missing. It's too much. It's too clunky. It, it doesn't give me a message. And then the next weekend, I decided, ah, just forget it. I'm just going to discard it. Because I realized I can't ch change it that much. So I need to start from scratch. And I started from scratch. And I feel so happy about this chapter. It's absolutely my favorite because it made me suffer, but it also gave me then a nice resolution at the end. <laughs> and it's also my favorite chapter, okay. to be honest. <laughs> and that's yeah. probably in part because Liliana worked so hard at it. It's often the way, that's often the feedback we get as publishers is where someone has really pulled together a new field or difficult concepts that are in disparate places. But students, but also the lecturers really appreciate that someone else has done that work. For them. I do yeah. think this book talks about quite a few topics and many researchers and they can relate their work to this book actually and make that as entrance to browse more um, of other fields like a physicist can, <clears throat> can relate their work with the physics part of this book and then start from there they can see how their work can be applied to biology or chemistry or yeah how uh, and vice versa the same way. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's a part I like the book especially. I was I was thinking about the book uh, probably when I was into a fifth year of teaching. Um, I used to teach in Germany as well, and I realized 
it would be so much easier if I had a book to give to the students and I could spend my lectures talking about more, maybe, you know, more recent discoveries, not covering basics, because they could read a little bit and we could discuss. But I, I never knew how to get um, about it. And honestly, when I was talking to some of my colleagues, they all discouraged me from why I'm writing a textbook. They said, why? Why would you go into something like this? You know, people have internet, they can check the concept, they have, uh, you know, traditional textbooks, why would you go into that? But I, I kind of felt I would like, you know, I would like that challenge. And I, I, I need to kind of make a little bit of a systematic uh, a, approach uh, to the book as well. And then when I was in Cambridge, a friend of mine told me, why don't you approach Cambridge University Press and have a meeting with them? And, and this was a, a meeting that I had with Katrina and she was so positive <laughs> about writing a book that I felt, oh, maybe I could do this. Definitely a team, a team game. And I think from the publishing point of view, um, as a commissioning editor, it's an absolute gift when you come across like you, partly the just the sheer enthusiasm for your subject, obviously the expertise, but combined, I think, with that, that kind of the teaching experience, but from that, the drive to do it, you know, STM academics, science and um, technology medicine academics have plenty else to be getting on with. Their motivations are different, perhaps from some of their humanities colleagues. Um, they don't need to write a book. So that's not how their careers are enhanced. That's not how the world kind of perceives them and what they do. And so it takes a certain reason and a certain type of person and motivation for them to, to do it and take that extra time and effort. And often that motivation is their students and there's a gap. So from a publishing point of view, that, that combination of dream authors who are a delight to work with but also that obvious gap in the market. It's a course that's emerging. It's kind of moving down the curriculum. Students are motivated to take it and there's really nothing there already. Um, now there are challenges, of course, with that interdisciplinary audience, but, um, but yeah, from a publishing perspective, great authors, a gap in the market and that teaching and expertise come together. It makes it very easy from my point of view. So we both went to a seminar that day. And at that time, I finished a poster for my own group that time to show what we were doing. And everything was condensed in some graphics. And then I showed that to you and asked for some feedbacks. And then you were very happy with my design, actually. <clears throat> and then you told me, oh, Nan, I have a small project. I'm interested. Uh, I think that's how we started um, yeah. this project. Yes. And I, I need to admit, you know, we, uh, by the, at the beginning when we started, of course, we needed to discuss uh, a little bit more, like, what do I want from the figure? What can you do? How do you understand the figure? But by the time we went to the later chapters or the chapters that were written later, the process was much smoother. You know, I remember some figures being finished very quickly because first of all we already had few elements that we can we could work with but also the communication you know we understood how I work you work and we understood this common language I think this is what makes something a very nice process when you have this kind of communication between the team the process of putting them together um it's all started with communication as Liliana said because I see myself as a more like designer, <clears throat> but not artist, because when you're an artist, your work is more for other people to interp interpret what you're trying to say. But in this project, it's more about, um, you know, showing some accurate scientific facts. Um, so communication and then confirm <clears throat> your understanding is very important because, um, you know, it's, the, the graphics, they are trying to represent what Liliana has written or Tonya has written in the text. So um, I need to link the graphics with the text, you know, precisely. Um, so communication, confirmation is very important. And once that is established, then <clears throat> I try to, you know, think or imagine how this can be expressed. Just the, imagine the 3D um, structure of that and then put that down. Uh, using software. And uh, this software I'm using quite simple actually. I also use PowerPoint 
uh, Liliana, yeah, you remember that time. Mm. Um, you don't have to use complicated software. And myself, I'm not a professional designer. Um, I, I just, I'm just interested um, in doing some graphics stuff. The words that strike fear in, a, in, a, in an editor's heart are the words montage in relation to a cover where authors want to try and represent every possible angle of their book in little tiny images. Um, and that's obviously very hard. You want to cover from our point of view from publishing. Obviously, you want something impactful. You want something that's very pleasing and eye catching, but also you need it to work as a little thumbnail on places like Amazon um, online. So. Um, yeah, simple is good, but that's not always, always easy to do and to end up with a cover that represents your book, but is also, mm. you know, pleasing. And also, I, I always feel as an editor that it's your book. I want the authors to, although in some ways it's the publisher or marketing department maybe's choice or responsibility, you want the author to be pleased with it. In this case, it's great that you've been able to work together and produce something you know, so appealing and so, um, you know, effective for the topic. It can be a very personal thing too. It can be very, I always try and remember to ask authors really obvious things like, do, is there a colour you really don't like? Are there, mm. you really hate the cover of? Just so we get anything obvious out the way because you, you do, you get authors, you've designed the whole cover and they say, ah, yeah, I never like green. I think that it's the range of the figures that always really struck me from, really quite introductory ones that had to kind of work for those multi multidisciplinary audience which I'm sure we'll get onto the challenges with that people with very different backgrounds very different understanding of the words the terminology and the different scales as well right up to the kind of cutting edge here's research that's happening now which is what motivates students you know they're taking the course for that reason they want to know what's happening now yes they'll learn the basics but they want it to lead through to current research and the exciting things. And it's, it's a great field because there are so many exciting things and it is so new and fresh. I think one of the biggest challenges of this kind of book or <clears throat> is um, the fact that it's so multidisciplinary a field and that students coming to it have such different backgrounds. And that's really, we've seen it in other kind of newly emerging developing areas where courses are beginning, but it's a real challenge in vocabulary, in background understanding, even the people, the students from a particular field would have slightly different backgrounds. They may have taken different courses and, and it takes a real gift to be able to get them all on the same page. I think this was my biggest fear, um, how well, can we explain it? And that's why we went through different inter, inter, iterations of the chapters, how well we can explain it so that everybody can find it interesting. Nobody gets totally bored with it. And it is simple, but complex, you know? So like, it's a very difficult challenge. Um, well, if somebody wants to really start working on a book, I, I, I could recommend the experience. I would not say don't do it you challenge yourself, you learn a lot, you learn how much you didn't understand as well. So you learn about those topics. It's a creative process. Writing a textbook might look very boring or you know, not interesting, but actually it's very creative because you have to write about the concepts in an interesting way. And I think the first thing I would do is think about the team, you know, have a look, Who's your editor? Can you communicate with the editor nicely? Because this person is going to be your insider. This person has seen many different authors and have seen many different authors struggling. So she or he can help, you know, in the times of crisis. And the second thing is there needs to be enthusiasm. You have to know why are you writing the book? And you can have different reasons, but you have to cl be clear about what is your reason? Because you will need to get reminded of that reason when you think, why did I ever start that? <laughs>